Welcome to PLZ Soccer's European Football Show. I'm your host, Patrick Mullen. Delighted to be joined by my co-host, Blair Malloy. Blair, can we just take a minute to appreciate how good this week of football has been? Incredible week, Patrick. Absolutely incredible week. I mean, 18 goals across the four games. What, what a start to the Champions League quarterfinals. I don't think it could have got much better. Before we get into every game in a bit of detail, a classic part of this show is what we're wearing. We're not here wearing these just for a jolly. What are you wearing this week? Yes, we've, we've done this again. We've man managed to clash wearing this, the same team, but they have been involved this week, so I think it's pretty on brand. This is a Barcelona away shirt, a fetching orange number. I mean, maybe orange, maybe slightly brighter than that. Maybe a salmon. <laughs> maybe go with a salmon. salmon. We'll take salmon. Um, 2009 away top, one of the likes of Henri, Ibrahimovic, Xavi, and yes, that those great, great Barcelona teams. And I think that's a, a number from just a little bit earlier. A little bit earlier, the 2003-2004 season, the year that Henrik Larsson joined Barcelona, yeah. likes of Iniesta were playing then, Xavi, all kind of maybe coming up through the ranks. Even peak Ronaldinho I see in that yeah. shirt. Yeah, I, I love it, it's one of my favourites, but I don't trust myself to wear it at five a side because no, it's just, no. it's one that should be in a frame yeah. and it'll probably be going back there straight it, after. It is that sort of papery material that so would just tear straight away and of course Giovanni Van Bronckhorst recently yes. over here, um, I'm pretty sure he wore that shirt as well. I think he was in that squad at the time. Barcelona obviously involved in the quarterfinals. Let's have a look at some of the results we've had so far this, this week. So we've had Real Madrid versus Manchester City, that thrilling 3-3 game at the Bernabeu. Arsenal versus Bayern Munich, another draw, a 2-2 with the game of two penalties that weren't avoided. And then you have Atletico Madrid 2, Borussia Dortmund 1, PSG 3, Barcelona 2. Blair, 18 goals across the games. Quite stunning. Yep, it was, it was an incredible week. And it all started off for me on Tuesday night. Real Madrid against Man City. It was a lot of people talking about what game was on the main screen, what game yeah. was on the second screen in this digital age, what game do you put all your attention to. I went I went old school and I put Real Madrid on the one TV and went, I'm watching this start to finish and I was not disappointed. It's, quite, it's actually quite a bit of a shame, actually, given how many good games we've had that they were all put on the same time because I think any other game of the week, you'd be watching both at the same time. Yeah. Definitely, and I mean that Real Madrid game, it was wall to wall entertainment for the full 90 minutes. And there is a clash of two absolute giants of the modern game. I mean, we've had the Godfather, we've had Muhammad Ali against Joe Frazier. This is a modern trilogy for the ages. And I mean, if we take a look back here at some of the results that have been in the past three years between Real Madrid and Man City, more so between Carlo Ancelotti and Pep Guardiola in that Champions League semi final of 21 22. The first leg, Manchester City 4, Real Madrid 3, and that incredible turnaround at the Bernabeu where Real Madrid beat them. 3-1 in the second leg to progress and of course going to win it that year year after last year in the semi-finals 22-23 season Real Madrid won all at the Bernabeu with Man City and then Man City took them apart mm. back at the Etihad Man City then going on to win it last season and then we come on to the third instalment this year, an incredible game finished 3 all, and we are now on to the second leg coming up. You look at that and you just think You've had some great semi-finals, you've had some great quarter-finals. This game would be absolutely blockbuster. If that was a final, a Champions League final at Wembley this summer, that would be quite a finish to what, a, quite a fitting end to what has been a great Champions League already. Yeah, although it's only the quarter-final, it really did have that feel of this is, this is an occasion. Mm. This really is possibly the best in Europe going up against each other. Maybe in Real Madrid, not their best at the minute, but just European royalty and they know how to do it on this big stage. Just the talent as well that they've got. It's just flitted without the squad. Every single goal we're going to talk about was just incredible. Yeah, it started off with that Bernardo Silva goal from two minutes. A long free kick. For me, I think the goalkeeper should do better there. I think that he takes a step to his left and it's just such a long effort. That L into the game, he's got to be ready for that. He's got to see Bernardo Silva going for that corner. Do you think he's expecting it? You know, two minutes into the game, as he said, do you not think Bernardo Bernardo Silva with his left foot is just going to whip a ball across the goal. That's why he takes that step and he's just been completely caught off guard. I think the, the quality these players have, you need to be ready for anything. You need to be aware that they can try and put one in, whether at the first minute or the last minute. If it's 30 yards out, they're going to have a goal. And that quality was shown with Real Madrid. Two goals in two minutes, really, just to turn this game on its head and what goals they were. Yeah, two two deflections. Um, the first one, obviously, Camavinga, a very obvious deflection from outside the box. The second one, I just, I thought it was a brilliant, um, impotent finish from Rodrigo and then I watched it back and seen it take, took a massive deflection to beat Ortega. But, 
You don't shoot, you don't score. They both they, they carved Man City open twice and twice in the blink of an eye they were ahead. Well, it was the goals that were deflections, but I don't think you can take anything away from the build-up throughout this game, all six of those goals. It was the team teamwork playing the ball up to these people and yes maybe these two goals ended up in deflections but the football these two sides are playing is quite spectacular yeah it's unbelievable and then Man City scored two of the most incredible goals <laughs> Phil Foden Phil it's Foden unbelievable I mean I would make an argument is Phil Foden possibly one of the best players in the world right now <sighs> you said this before the show and I, I, I to be honest I was trying to think of someone to counteract you with someone that I could say is better than Phil Foden but I can't. I'm not. I, before everyone crucifies me online, <laughs> I'm not saying he is the best player in the world. I'm just saying right now, Form. I don't see another player playing as well as him. No. He's just unbelievable. He scored that hat trick mid, last midweek for Manchester City um, against Aston Villa, and it was just incredible. And then he picks that ball up in the Bernabeu, and he credit it to him. He's playing so well. You just thought. I know what's happening here. This is going to the top corner. Absolute certainty. And then Josco Guardiol, mm. the centre-back, potentially even better. The first touch, I think, gets away from him. But what an incredible hit that is to make it 3-2. That's an example of taking your opportunity when it comes. You know, brought into the side due to injuries. And that hit, if you haven't seen it, take a look. It's unbelievable on the right-hand side. Just whips it into that far corner. That I think a striker, I think Erling Haaland, would have been proud of that finish. To do it from his position is quite stunning. Oh, 100%. And then potentially the best goal was even yet to come with Fede Valverde, who latched onto this ball across the box. Vinny Jr., he, he almost sees Valverde dropping off and he pulls this ball back across the, across the box and Valverde catches it on the volley and what an absolute stunner it was. It was, it was. it was a stunner to wrap up what was just an incredible game. There's not many games that I finish and I'm like, I feel like I now need to have a lie down and just to relax because it was, it was stunning from start to finish. The first goal in just two minutes and then Valverde finishing it off at the end. A stunner. Yeah. And I, I, you could maybe see Manchester City being ahead that late on. Obviously, you can never rule out Real Madrid. But Pep Guardiola, he said he's not seen it as a missed opportunity and batted away any accusations that it was. It's Bernabeu, my friend. <laughs> you are from England, you don't know what does it mean playing Bernabeu. And in Champions League, take the result. And the way we played, especially, the way we played. First half, players like have the composer to so safe with the ball, to don't lose the ball. We lost more than usual against Madrid. It's so difficult because they have not just legs, they have the quality to, to make this transition effectively. But in second half, we play with incredible personality. We try to, you know, to score the goals. We did it. I cannot say more. Score three goals in Bernabeu is really, really good. I like that from Pep. I like that. It's a bit of, it's a bit of confidence. He knows. No one probably knows better. He, through his days at Barcelona, he knows how tough it is to go to the Bernabeu and get a result. Yeah, it's a stadium where he's very familiar with and he's obviously had some good and bad results there but he knows that coming away with that with a draw is definitely a good result. And two men who are also familiar to a stadium... <laughs> playing for Bayern Munich as they travelled to the Emirates also on Tuesday night, that game of course finishing at Arsenal 2, Bayern Munich 2. Harry Kane and Serge Gnabry, two players who were absolute certainties to score in this game, Patrick. It felt, it felt written in the stars, especially for Harry Kane, to return to the Emirates after leaving Spurs in the summer. All that talk of why has he gone to the Bundesliga? Is that a step yeah. down? Is he going to win a title? And probably they're not going to win the league now. To go back and just silence that crowd with that penalty perfect for me. Yeah, and it says something that he has now scored more goals at the Emirates than any other visited player. Still doing it when he's not even in the league. And Serge Gnabry as well, of course, his last three visits to London, he scored four goals against Tottenham, he scored two goals against Chelsea and now one against his old club Arsenal. He absolutely loves playing in the capital. Yeah, he does, but I think the big talking point we've got to talk about this game is the penalty drama. There was two penalties. I think the first one we'll start with is Gabriel. What was he doing? Yeah. <laughs> now, I have seen a video this morning that has uh, a couple of examples of Arsenal playing the same sort of free kick. Well, it, not playing it as such, but the goalkeeper just rolls it. Gabriel stops the ball with his hand, mm. puts it where he wants it to go, goalkeeper takes it out. But in that moment, it just seemed so bizarre. And the referee clearly blows the whistle. The goalkeeper passes it across. Gabriel then picks it up and almost gives it back to him. But it, it seems so obvious that it's been taken. I'd love to know what the referee said. If I was a player at that time, I'd love to know. But Thomas Tuchel, speaking after the game, he gave a little explanation of what the referee said to his players. He did a huge mistake in uh, not giving a hand penalty. 
I know it's a crazy situation, but they put the ball down, he whistles, he gives the ball free and, and the defender takes the ball in its hand. What makes us really angry is the explanation on the field. He told our players that it's a kid's mistake and he will not give a penalty like this in a quarter final. This is a horrible, horrible explanation uh, because that means he's judging now handballs. It's a big kid's mistake, adult's mistake or whatever. A kid's mistake? A kid's mistakes cost you a penalty in the Champions League yeah, quarter final. I don't think that is, I don't think you can use that as an excuse. Interestingly enough, though, Peter Walton, former Premier League referee, he, he applauded the decision and said it showed clear empathy with the game. And I mean, I suppose there is there is a sort of leniency there for referees making a decision that feels right in the spirit of the game. But I think when it's so important and the, the margins in these games are so small, I think it has to be a penalty and I think Bayern Munich will be rightly upset but then equally Arsenal probably upset they should have had a penalty of their own. Right at the very end of the game, you yeah. know, there's, there's nothing you'd want more. But Kaya Saka going in, in my opinion, I don't think it's a penalty. I think there's clear contact between Saka and the goalkeeper but I think he's instigating it. You can just see that right trailing leg just kind of lean towards the goalkeeper and of course he's going to catch him if it hits him, hits him on the leg. I, I think... Uh, a point that is always missed in these debates, though, is just the speed mm. at which Bukai Osaka is running. For him to, for him to think that thought process too of going, okay, I need to move my legs out the way, take a step to the left, get round the goalkeeper because he wants to score. Mm. You know, there's no, there's no benefit in him going down there. It's almost certainly that he's going to score. And I think he just gets cleaned out by Manuel Neuer, and I think it's a definite penalty for me. I'm glad it's ended a draw. I'm glad one team, both teams, kind of had a slight thing against them that they would have wanted to go the other way, but now it's all set up for a cracker next week. And if we look at a game that is definitely set up for an incredible finish next week, PSG 2, Barcelona 3. Another, I thought, we had, I thought we'd been given enough from this Champions League on Tuesday night and on Wednesday night it just delivered again. I thought we were going to, after that first half, I was like, this is a nice night off, Blair. We're going to have a nice, easy, we, we can talk for the first half of this show all about the first night and the second night we can have a relax. But what a roller coaster of a game that one was. The second half was just, I keep saying the word stunning, but it's all I can think of in this moment. What a second half. And just, again, incredible goals. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Rafinha opened the score for Barcelona. First ever Champions League goal again. Like London buses, you wait for ages and one. Yeah. And two come along at the same time. Um, it shows you the confidence of the man. Talking about that shot, a man who played in that, Ronaldinho. He used to wear an R necklace. When he was unveiled as a Barcelona player, Rafinha turned up with the same style of necklace. I mean, way to make a rod for your own back. But... He's had a bit of a tricky time of Barcelona this year, but I think last night was maybe one of those coming-of-age performances where he, he really was a difference maker for Barcelona. I think as well, the second half, I know PSG didn't hold on to the game, but it shows you the impact of a manager in these teams. When you've got that much quality, it's quite easy to think, well, what's a manager going to do? But at half-time, PSG, they came out and they were just a completely different team. They blew Barcelona away for 15, 20 minutes and they managed to get two goals. Dembele against his old club with an absolute stunner into the top right-hand corner. And Vitinha with a little one-two off his left and onto his right and slotted it home. But it's the run for me that is the most special. Just to, the awareness to see that space, pick it out, and in the back of the net. Yeah, it's an absolute rocket from Usman Dembele against his old club. I, I couldn't believe he spent seven years at Barcelona. That's <laughs> what I, a fact that really escaped me. But you were talking about, obviously, managers making a difference there. And I think in Bar Barcelona and Xavi, you've seen a manager really make a difference, bringing on Pedri and bringing on Andreas Christensen. That ball from Pedri for Rafinha's second goal is absolutely delicious, <laughs> where Rafinha catches it on the volley. And then, of course, Christensen with the winner. His first touch of the game, just getting up and heading it home. I think PSG will feel like they would have wished for a draw. I think, they, I think a draw could have been a fair result, but that is what it's all about. The tactical decisions in these games, these big pressure moments to bring on someone like Christiansen, who's going to be tall, he's going to be there, gets his head on it and gets them all three points. Well, yeah. not all three points, but uh, advantage. Advantage Barcelona. Advantage Barcelona. Um, and a, a player that really impressed me from this Barcelona side, we've talked about it on this show before, mm -hmm. the youth players of this Barcelona team coming from La Masia, Paul Cabassi at centre-back last night. Mm -hmm. 
he was incredible. He was 17 years old. He's now the youngest defender to start a Champions League quarterfinal. Um, here's what here was manager Xavi had to say about him after the game. Pau Kibasi is an incredible player. He's been world class. Guys, it's not normal for a 17-year-old to perform like that. I ran out of words to praise him. He's at an exceptional level. He competes like an older player. It's just insane. And I think when you've got a player the calibre of Xavi saying that about you, it shows you how he's operating at. If you're doing it not only in the Premier League or in, in the La Liga, but to do it on the biggest stage of them all in the Champions League, and not even just to play, not even just, oh, I'm going to be the first 17-year-old to start a game in the Champions League. He's dominating these games. He's making these seasoned professionals look like he's been there. He looks himself like a seasoned professional. Yeah, him and Jules Koundé last night, they kept Mbappe quiet. Mbappe could not get in the game. And I think there was a lot of talk on the TV last night reminiscent of Ronald Koeman and that's really high praise indeed and you think of Ronald Koeman was an absolute Barcelona legend but more so about his distribution with the ball the way he takes the ball out of defence and sprays passes and makes atta starts attacks from the back and for a 17 year old again absolutely incredible uh, an interesting stat here um, Xavi obviously announced a few months ago that he would be leaving Barcelona at the end of the season now 12 unbeaten <laughs> since he says that he's going to he's going to leave the club do you think they can convince him to stay? I think I think we've made a decision that early on. There's been a, there's a reason behind it, whatever it might be, a personal reason, a club decision. It could be letting him a legend of the club leave on his terms. But I think twelve games unbeaten. Could they go all the way, win the league title, and maybe win the Champions League? What a fitting end that would be for Xavi. Yeah, if he won the if he won the Champions League, I think that would be an incredible, incredible achievement this year, given the the standard of the opposition. But they are in the perceived easier side of the draw yeah. so we'll see we'll see if they if they do if they do progress you've obviously got atletico versus dortmund atletico hold the advantage in this game with a 2-1 win yep that early defending from dortmund oh. that really left a lot to be desired um i watched the highlights of that game and rodrigo de paul he must not believe his luck it's an absolute hospital ball the keeper gives the the, the dortmund defender and he's got nowhere to go he, he either turns he's got three atletico players around about him he tries to play it around the corner rodrigo de paul nicks in makes it 1-0 and then 2-0 after the half hour mark Samuel Lino with a, again as a lovely finish a note for the ball from Griezmann it's a ridiculous pass inside the opposition area he just clips it over the defender to find Lino on his own and it's a great finish they just look well, Griezmann in particular just looks like he's playing with so much confidence out there the, the, the nerve the cheek to not get caught up in the emotion. It's just that experience just to go, yeah, I'm just going to dink it over to the left yeah. and it gets put in the back of the net and that is the quality we're talking about in these games. Yeah, a really interesting point about Samuel Lino, um, a player really coming to Dort prominence this season with Atletico Madrid. He was almost set to sign for Dortmund. Um, they tried to hijack his deal when he signed for Atletico Madrid. They signed for um, around about 6 million euros. Um, Atletico um, Dortmund rather actually came in and offered 15 million euros <laughs> afterwards but the deal was all signed. It was it was, all, it was all done and dusted and he came back to haunt them last night and then Sebastian Haller though did kind of get this game back in it's still all to play for a brilliant goal in the 80th minute on the half turn just slotting it into the bottom left hand corner that is so hard to do yeah it's a proper centre forwards finish that yeah. is like he's had to adapt he's had to improvise and he's overcame that situation with an absolutely excellent volley into the bottom corner and of course Dortmund hit the bar twice late yeah. on they could have very easily got a draw here um, but it's still all set up for the second leg every game was just spectacular every goal was spectacular I've got to ask you what was your goal of the week? Oh, that's it's a tricky question because, like you said, there has been so much quality. Um, I think. I think I'm going to have to go with Fede Valverde. Okay. Um, I think that finish was just incredible. Um, a little bit of reading about Fede Valverde. This, I'm a big advocate for his thing. He's a great, very underrated player. When he was first coming through in Uruguay with Penarol, his captain um, and centre forward of that team was one Diego Forlan. Wow. So he may have been he may have been giving him some shooting practice when he was there to to see if he can do that. But what was your favourite this week? I'm going to say at the same game, mine. Phil Foden, yeah. that, that strike into the top left-hand corner. We've seen him do it a number of times this season. And a funny story I actually was thinking about when I seen him just do that. Just, he just seems to be able to find that top left-hand corner like it's nothing. During lockdown, Phil Foden posted a few videos of him out in his garden. I'm, you'll be, you're not surprised. He's got a lovely garden, yeah. a proper yeah, yeah, full-size yeah. goal. And he was just taking shot after shot, just passed it off the wall and whipped it into top left-hand corner. Goal, goal, goal. And I remember watching him then thinking, 
who is this kid? Like, yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah, I think he was yeah. maybe, what year was that? 15, 16, 17, that yeah. kind of age. And now he's doing it on the biggest stage, pulling them into the top left-hand corner like they're on remote. Yeah, absolutely incredible. And he's a player, like I said, that is really at the top of his game right now. And finally, just before we finish, Patrick, I'm going to put you under pressure here. Who is going through Ooh. from these four ties? Ooh. I think I think the nature of these ties have shown us it's still all to play for. Yeah. But I'm going to go a bit controversial, as always. Real Madrid. Okay. Bayern Munich. Yep. Atletico Madrid yep. and Barcelona. No more English clubs in the Champions League. Okay, I agree with you there. Um, oh. On two of them, ah, I agree with <laughs> you for a bit. that I think Atletico are going to progress against Borussia Dortmund. I think Barcelona will see it out against PSG. I think they'll, I think they'll win. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think Real Madrid will go through. I think Man City, with Kyle Walker especially back in yeah. that team for the second leg at the Etihad, I think they might just be too strong. Um, and I still think Arsenal will overcome Bayern Munich because I tipped Arsenal at the beginning of this tournament yeah. and I am sticking with it until they go out. Well, I think we can all, we can all agree. I cannot wait for next week's second legs. They're oh, going to yeah. be quite special. That is sadly all we have time for on the European football show this week. We will be back next week to discuss all of the fallout and the ends of those second leg fixtures. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.